Today we're talking about music as inspiration and we're looking at this beautiful handmade silver box and you can see that it has musical notes all over it and this is what we're going to learn how to do, creating texture like that. Yes. So okay. Mark Nelson, you're here with me today and, and you're going to show us this incredible tool. Yeah, this is called a rolling mill mm -hmm. and with it we're going to show you how to do some roller printing. Okay. And what that is is a, is a technique to imprint some te uh, texture or a pattern onto sheet metal mm -hmm. so that you can cut it up and use it however you like. Mm -hmm. So on the box you are using musical notes, but it really could be any kind of texture. Could be any kind of texture or print or anything really. Mm -hmm. So how do you do this? Well you do is start with a rolling mill and uh, what this does is it'll change the thickness of a sheet of metal mm -hmm. is between two rollers, the upper and lower. It's also used to make your own wire. Um, roller printing, changing your own sheet metal, the thickness of it, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, it is a very expensive tool, and so mm -hmm. you do need to take care of it. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure that these rollers never rust or um, get wet and um, or nicked in, in any way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're protective of those rollers. Very much so. They're mm -hmm. very hard to to get refinished. Mm -hmm. So, you want to get started? Yes. All right. Um, I got some steel plates here. These have been um, engraved with a pattern, and I can put one of those patterns on this 18 gauge piece of copper. Mm -hmm. Which one you want to see? Let's see this one, and so that this one? is a steel plate that's already, it comes this way, it's engraved. It comes that way, it's been mm -hmm. engraved uh, with a, another machine. Mm -hmm. So we can use this plate over and over again. And what gauge is the copper? Gauge is 18, which is about one millimeter. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with what they call a dead pass. And that means that when you go through, nothing's going to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. What that does is that sets the distance of the rollers, okay? Mm -hmm. Now what we need to do is we need to give it hmm, maybe an eighth or quarter of a turn on the mm -hmm. wheel, bring the rollers together. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to squish it. Now you're really going to work. Yeah. We'll put this in here, and uh, if you have to hold down the bench, you'll do that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It takes a little bit of effort sometimes, <laughs> uh -huh. but with these rolling mills, uh, a lot of them have gear reduction, which makes it a lot easier. Okay, sort of like power steering for your rolling mill. Exactly. So that's all what right. we got. So your texture just goes right onto the sheet. Yeah, and now all these recessed areas are raised. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can we see something different? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can use just about anything. Paper mm -hmm. towels work great. As Paper a back towels? Yeah, as a background texture. Mm -hmm. There again, a little bit thicker metal, like 18 gauge, is going to take mm -hmm. it deeper and. Um, give you a little more to work with. But we have to adjust these rollers a little bit. So are you doing a dead pass again? Yeah, I'll have to do a dead pass. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you can really use anything to create your texture? Uh, pretty much. Uh, leaves mm -hmm. work great. Uh, make sure they're dry. Okay. Okay, and, and, mm -hmm. and everything. You don't want to stick wet leaves in here. Oh, right, because we're protecting the rollers. Right. And we'll feed this in here. You could also use craft punches and punch out little shapes. Exactly. And I'll show you that in a minute here, too. Okay. See, not enough pressure on that one. Let's go even a little bit more. So it's kind of a matter of finessing the rollers so that they're close enough that it's difficult to turn, and then you know you're going to get a pattern. Is that right? right? You want it to be difficult to turn, but not impossible. Because mm -hmm. um, that can hurt your roller. Okay. Oh, cool. You see that faint little texture yes. there? Yes. Now, this works great with fabric, lace, mm. and all kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. And you could really bring out contrast with p adding a patina or doing some other kind of finish to the surface of the metal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, another great way to do it is take uh, cardstock. This is how I got my uh, musical notes. Oh, okay. You can see the, the old there. Mm -hmm. You can take musical notes or cut out your own shapes mm -hmm. and do the same thing. Just lay, it can be on top or bottom. Mm -hmm. And let's see if I'm set up here. We'll do it just, just like we did. This one's a little stiffer, which is good. I might have to hold down the bench on this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now this one came out really nice. Yeah. So you can really see the texture here. Mm -hmm. And does it matter? Can you use any kind of metal? You can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's best to kind of experiment with copper because it is inexpensive. Mm -hmm. But definitely with silver, you can see right here, um, oh, yeah. same technique that I just did mm -hmm. uh, on silver. Mm -hmm. And it was polished before I started. Mm -hmm. So all the empty spaces remained polished with this beautiful matte finish on the back. Oh, that is really pretty. And then on this piece, you're using the punch outs themselves. Exactly. I had some punch outs here mm -hmm. and uh, sand sandwiched them between two pieces of metal. Oh. And so that's another technique is sandwiching. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so we can get two for the price of two. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good idea. And um, let's see. 
I also have some etched brass. Mm -hmm. This is how I got the musical notes on the lid. And I can do this for you. Sure. So use some acid etch to create that mm -hmm. first? I used the acid etch to create the template, the brass mm -hmm. piece. And then um, once that was done, I can use that brass because it's a harder metal to oh. imprint on a softer metal. So you'll be able to use it again and again as a template now? Uh, once or twice, maybe. Okay. Brass usually tends to not last as long as the steel. Mm -hmm. It's a little light, but we'll see if we get a good print here. So you can really make this custom by creating your own it's texture very plates. very custom. And mm -hmm. that's the cool thing because everything's going to fit your design. Okay? We can mm -hmm. see a faint imprint. Mm hmm yeah, right really there. cool. So this is a way to add a lot of your own style to the piece. So let's take a look at the box again, now that we know how to do it. Okay. Yeah. So on the box, what you did was use the punch-out notes, right? Punch-out notes, yeah. I just hand-drew them on cardstock mm -hmm. and um, ran it through the mill and got my, my sheet of metal that I could cut up mm -hmm. and use as the wall. You can see the lid. It's removable there. And on the lid, I did the, the etched brass technique oh, okay. and then formed it into the shape. Mm -hmm. And you also have a ring here. Mm -hmm. And what is this made, made out of? Uh, argentium silver and um, has a little bit of the gold plating on mm -hmm. the inside rim. Mm -hmm. And they're again using the brass etched sheet mm -hmm. on argentium. So. And with the musical notes inside. Yeah. I love that piece. That's really beautiful. And then the tree piece. A tree, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the rim around the outside is uh, from the stock a silver stock that I used mm -hmm. and um, just cut it out as a pattern, as a texture element. All right, and on the bracelet it looks like you have some textured places here that you also could create using the rolling mill. Right. Right, and so with this bracelet we talked about on another segment, or we'll talk about it on another segment, is that you create the texture first and then make your own washers. Right, exactly. You can create big sheets of texture that you can use in little pieces or big pieces, mm -hmm. however you like. And so how do you get this darker kind of antique finish? Like on the box and on the ring, you have sort of where the grays and blacks are. Well, the grays, out. I use uh, a patina that's um, kind of a hydrochloric acid mixture. Okay. Uh, it's very safe to use, but it does give more of a matte black. Mm -hmm. And the box is a Sharpie ink pen. Come on. No, I love it. <laughs> it's very black. It's very rich. And I use mm -hmm. an array pink eraser on the mm -hmm. highlights to bring out the black. So, so let me get this straight. You've used the rolling mill and then you go over this whole thing with your Sharpie and buff it away with an eraser. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. And thank you for watching. Join us next time for more design inspiration on beads, bubbles, and jewels.